Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're gonna to be talking all about how you can store any kind of data in a single variable in C++. A lot of you are probably thinking, well, yeah, you can do that with a void pointer. And yes, that's true. And I'll have a video about void pointers coming soon in the future. However, this is a much better way. It's a safer way. And it's a C++ 17 brand new way of doing things. I've had this kind of mini series lately on how we can store different types of data in single variables in C++. There's something called STD optional, STD variant. And now we're gonna be talking about STD any. And I've already made videos about the other two. So if you haven't seen the video about optional data or the video about how we can store multiple variables, multiple data types in a single variable, then check out those videos. They'll be linked up there. So now we're kind of here at the end. We're up to the point where using STD any, we can store anything. And I think that the bigger question here is not how do I use STD any? I think that's pretty straightforward as we'll see in a minute. It's why does this exist? When do we want to use it? And why would we use STD any instead of something like STD variant? All brilliant things that we're going to be talking about today. But first, let's talk about our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. I'm sure you guys have probably heard of Skillshare before. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills with unlimited access to all of these classes so that you can join the ones that are right for you. Since I'm more of an engineer than an artist, I really like all of the creative classes that Skillshare has to offer. For example, this class is a fantastic reference for whenever I need to make a new logo. Skillshare Skillshare are also one of my go-to references for any time I need to deal with web stuff, because let's be honest, I want to spend as little time as possible on that. And with these small, concise videos, I can get through this stuff quickly. Skillshare are offering two months of free membership to anyone who signs up using the link in the description below. Two months, free membership for two months. Think about how much you could learn in two months. So go ahead and check that out. And I wanna give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. As you guys know, I'm quite new to doing this YouTube thing full time and it's amazing companies like that who make this possible. Anyway, you see what I did there? I said any way, because we're talking about STD any. Let's just jump into the code. So the first thing that we're gonna do is include the header file, which is just any, just like that. Also make sure that you are, of course, compiling this code with C++ 17, because this is a C++ 17 only feature. It's new in C++ 17, I should say, because obviously if you're using a version newer than that, presumably it would still be there. Unless the committee decided that it was a terrible idea, which, Still convinced it might be. And in that case, it's gone. But let's just pretend that it's gonna be here forever because it might. So to use this, you simply write std any. It's much like variant, except there are no template arguments because of course it's it can store any type. And then we just will type in a name for our variable, we'll call it data. You can use something called std make any if you wanna construct something from here. But what we'll do is we'll just kind of keep it empty here and then just set data equal to like two, for example. And then we can set data equal to a const char, for example. So this will be a const char pointer. Or we can set data equal to a string, in which case we'll just write something like this. Or we could set it equal to, you guys kind of get the point. You can set it equal to like absolutely anything because that's what it is, any. Thing. If you want to retrieve your data, you're going to have to do a little bit more work. You'll have to actually know which type it is and then kind of cast it into that type. And you can do that by using std any cast. Then you just put in the type that you want to cast to, like std string, and then of course the actual any variable goes into the parameter here. Now this will throw an exception, a bad any cast exception, if the data is not of the type that you're trying to cast into. So just keep that in mind. This of course will return a string, so we can assign it like so. Now at first glance, this may seem like it's pretty much the same as std variant, and that's because, well, it's similar, right? We can store any type here, whereas std variant requires us to list all of our types. But see, whilst a lot of people might think that std variant is worse because you have to list all of your types, whereas here you don't have to worry about types at all, that's kind of why std variant is actually better than std any for pretty much anything you need to deal with. I'm really getting annoyed with saying the word any all the time. The fact that std variant requires you to list out all of those types is good. That's what makes it type safe. For example, we might forget to explicitly write the fact that this is a string and we might try and write some code like this. This looks perfectly reasonable. We set data to two, we set data to Cherno, which is a string, and then we try and get that string out. However, that's not going to work because, well, 
this cherno is not a string, is it? It's just a const char pointer. Whereas if we were using variant in this exact scenario, then our code would look something like this. We might have int, we might have std string. Now, of course, this would work correctly and we'd have to change this to be get, maybe get if, because this will get implicitly cast into a string because it has to be either a string or an int. So are there any differences between variant and any apart from the fact that variant, of course, requires you to list out the types? Well, yes, it's to do with how they're stored. Variant is simply a type safe union. What that means is that it stores all of its data in basically a union. And again, if you guys are not familiar with that, there is a video in the top right corner just about unions. What does any do? Well, let's take a look. If we just go into this header file, then we can see all of the code for any. A lot of people ask me, how does this work? How does that work? And my answer is just take a look. STL is a standard template library. It's implemented all in header files and you've got all of those files, all that source code on your computer. So just open them up and try and read it. I know it can be hard sometimes because of the way that it's written, but just take it slowly and you'll be surprised at how much you'll actually understand. So looking at this header file, we can start to piece together how this actually works. We know that storage seems to be the variable that stores, well, something. And you can see that what it is is actually a union. Let's take a look at what storage T is. It's a struct, which seems to have a small storage, a big storage, an aligned union. And if we actually take a look at what big storage T, for example, is, it's a void pointer surrounded by a bunch of padding and small storage is actually just an aligned union T, which digging in even deeper, we realize is an aligned union of all of the types. So what SCD any actually does, and I think this is quite clever, is for small types, it just stores them as a union, which means that for small types, it works in exactly the same way as a variant. However, if you have a large type, that's where it actually takes you into that void pointer, big storage. And in that case, it will actually dynamically allocate memory. Now, dynamically allocating memory is not good for performance. So to sum up how this works, if you're using a variant or SCD any with small types like integers, floats, you know, maybe like a, a vector four class or something like that, like in a math library, you'll be fine. I mean, they're gonna work in exactly the same way. And you can see by looking here at the source code that that small storage, which is all the way up here, happens to be, if we take a look at this align union and specifically this any small space size variable, you can see that it is around 32 bytes. Now this may be implementation specific. Obviously I'm using Visual Studio with MSVC. It's 32 bytes. So if you have more storage than that, at that point, SCD any will dynamically allocate. However, SCD variant will not. So in other words, apart from being more type safe and a little bit more restrictive, which is a good thing, SCD variant is also going to perform faster if you happen to deal with larger data or you want to avoid dynamic memory allocation. Another tip that I can give you for faster performance is to make sure that you don't copy data. So you can see that over here with string, I am of course copying it. If we go back to our SCD any way of doing things, you need to make sure that you return this by reference. And if you do that, you'll see it doesn't work natively like this. So this is something that actually would have worked with STD get. With any cast, it doesn't. Make sure that you actually stick the reference into the template argument here if you're planning to return by reference and that will of course make sure that everything is nicely optimized. And you can see that in this actual case, obviously make sure that we actually use SCD string and not a constant chart pointer. In this case, we won't actually get any memory allocations apart from the one that will probably come up from string. And it's actually very easy to test this. You can just replace operator new with one of your own by writing some simple code like this. This is not a complete good implementation of the new operator. So don't use this in any production code, obviously, but if we stick a breakpoint in here, then we'll now be aware of all memory allocations. And if I hit F5 to run this program, you'll see that we do get a memory allocation, but if we take a look at where it comes from, it actually comes from SCD string. So you can see over here, if I make the call stack a little bit bigger, we have SCD basic string, which then goes into the allocator. And if I go back to main and I just step through that code a little bit, so we'll go back up here. We'll just step out of that and then just go to the next line. If we take a look at this call stack a little bit more closely, it might actually seem like any is the one doing the allocation because you can see it comes from the assignment operator to any, but all any is actually doing is doing a construct in place, forwarding all those arguments. And it's the basic string you can see that is allocating once again. So F5 to 
continue running this. And again, we have a basic string and that is all of the allocations from this program. So in that case, STD any actually did not allocate anything. If however, we were to have some kind of class that would have more than 32 bytes. So for example, I'll have a struct here of two strings, S0 and S1. If I do try and actually set this up over here, I'll just use custom class and we will remove this any cast. And if I hit F5, if I skip past this basic string allocation that of course is coming from the member variables of that custom class, then you'll see that what we have here is that assignment operator and during the emplacement, you can see that this is a big storage operation, which of course does actually call new over here. So just be aware that SCD any will allocate if it needs to. And in this case, if the data that you're trying to store is above 32 bytes, you can see that it calls new and causes a dynamic memory allocation. So back to the question of when to use SCD any, when should it be used? This is a tricky one. A lot of people will just flat out tell you that it's just a bit useless. And to be honest, I'm kind of inclined to agree. When what like what is a good use case for SCD any? If you want to store multiple data types in a single variable, use SCD variant. It's basically a type safe version of SCD any, meaning that you can't set it to whatever type you please accidentally. And also it's not going to dynamically allocate memory, so it will perform better. If you have the need, the requirement to be able to store any data type in a single variable, maybe rethink the design of your program. I mean, I honestly really like can't think of a valid use case for this. I think that it's, I think that it's something that you probably should never use. I mean, if you have like a buffer of data and you have like absolutely no idea what that data is, you just want to, you just want to point it to it, then that's fine. You can use a void pointer for that. But this is like, this is something completely different. If you guys have any good use cases, if you guys have used this throughout your code and you think that it's useful, please drop a comment below. I'd love to read some of those comments and see because as it stands right now, I don't think this is anywhere near as useful as optional or variant. And it's kind of funny, I guess, to end, to end the series on something like this, but that's just the way it is. I just think that SCD any is, it's something that you should definitely be aware of, but maybe not something that you should use all that often. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. Also, don't forget to check out the link in the description for two months of free Skillshare membership. You can also drop a comment below if you want me to cover a specific topic in C++, and I will add it to my ever-growing list. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.